Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today we're going to do an after-action report of Battle Space by Table Salt Games. So let's get started. I've decided to return to Battle Space, a game I haven't played in some time, uh, by a uh, table, table Salt game. Uh, I say that, uh, that's important, I think. This is um, the first edition. This was a PDF that you can get, and I think still can get, on Wargame Vault. But it is in the process of being redone. It's, it's going to be coming out, produced by Modiphius Games. Uh, I don't know for sure when. I think they mentioned it would be early next year. For those of you who don't know, Battle Space is a solo or cooperative game. The players all play one side, usually running a fire team. And it is a brilliant system. It's really well put together. It's very, very simple. In fact, when you first read it, you'll be very unimpressed with the way the rules look and think there's got to be stuff here missing. Um, but when you sit down and play it, it really comes together. And it's really surprisingly good. You know, it gets a little, it's not the tightest of game systems, and that's Probably to be expected because it is small, but it, it plays really well. It's really enjoyable. Now, I mentioned there's a few expansions. This is the Seals on their Facebook page. There's also a um, special ops expansion, and I can't remember if it's the Facebook page or if it's War Games Vault, but one of them, there is a Vietnam expansion, which I think would work really well with this set of rules. Those are something I recommend looking into uh, if you have the opportunity. I've had to make a couple of changes because this is first adventure is supposed to be taking place in the jungle against an African militia group uh, or warlord group. And instead, we're going to be setting it in a fictional Middle Eastern country. So let's go to the gaming table. <laughs> Intelligence is identified an encampment located on the eastern region of Romandistan. Uh, it is believed to be a training camp vital to the Al-Wahid militia. Your team is tasked with sweeping the camp and gathering intel that can be used to fight against the Al-Wahid militia and its cohorts. So there are four objective markers hidden, uh, well they're not hidden, they're scattered around the table as per this uh, mission. One is up here. One is in here, one is in there, and one is over here in the market. One of those is marked on the bottom and it's randomly uh, placed. And that is the primary objective of the game. The others are secondary objectives. After turn eight, we will be pulling two sit rep cards instead of the usual one. So we are counting the turns. There isn't a game limit, it doesn't look like, for this game other than that, however. We will be entering the table over in the, here, we can exfil, we're infilling from here, we can exfil on any table edge. So we'll figure that out when the time comes. We have Havoc, who is uh, the team leader and armed with a smoke grenade, uh, well, with two smoke grenades. Uh, our medic is Bravo 1. Bravo 3 is carrying the M203 grenade launcher and has a magnifying scope on his, uh, on his gun. And lastly, we have Bravo 5, who also has a scope and an MC, or two M67, no, I'm sorry, one M67. So that is our team for today. Uh, we do have to roll a D6 for stealth. Stealth is an addition to the game that came in the, uh, the package we're running, the SEAL team package. Uh, on a four or higher, we enter the table in stealth mode. Okay, we're not in stealth anyway. That's gonna be rough. We're coming on from a bad angle, which is part of why I bought smoke grenades because we're going to be coming in <laughs> and there's a guy pointed right at us already. So what we're going to do first is we're going to initiate Havoc. Havoc initiates on a five, but he's also team leader. As long as these guys stay with him, I'm not going to activate him first. As long as they stay with him, they get to use his activation roll. So I should start with one of the others. Uh, who has the smoke grenades? Oh, but he has the smoke grenades. Damn. 
All right, we're going to have to do him first because I gave him the smoke grenades. Eight. So he initiates successfully. He's going to do a move. And then I'm going to attempt to drop smoke to try to block them. So that's the point we're looking at. Just between us directly. Uh, I rolled a nine. It looks like it's on target. So, smoke. All right. That's one smoke grenade used. I'm gonna go ahead and try to activate Bravo five. His initiative is nine, 10. So he does make his. Um, I think I may do an advance. Yeah, I'm gonna advance right into the smoke. Then we're gonna activate Bravo three. His activation, our initiative is nine, just nine. He's gonna advance. And lastly is our medic Bravo 1 with an initiative of 8. No problem. So they all make it. They're all still in command radius. They have all should have had a plus 1 on that anyway. Actually, uh, in this game, as long as they're in line of sight, they get a plus 1 too. Uh, so plus 1 for that. As opposed to the usual... Cohesion. It's not uh, cohesive. So we go to the sit rep phase. So we got uh, contact rear. An enemy straggler or element nearest to the last soldier that attempted initiative roll moves and attacks the nearest soldier in LOS. The enemy straggler nearest to the last soldier. Probably the guy that's actually looking at them, but I don't think he can do anything. No, he might have line of sight here because of the disc. Because he's up here. This is the guy. I think he's going to shoot at our team leader, because our team leader is kind of exposed there. Right now, everybody that's on the table as far as bad guys are just normal Al-Wahid. That's going to be a nine. Got to fire twice. So the first one, we miss. That was an 18. And the second one. Second one is a hit. That isn't good. We've taken a hit already. All right, now that was the sit rep card. Anyone who didn't activate on a sit rep gets to move automatically. They're both up there in that window in the minaret, and they're gonna be shooting at Havoc, who is standing there behind the smoke in the open. Not really where he'd prefer to be. Again, firing twice. The first one is a miss with a 12, and the second one is a hit. Not good. That's two hits already on our commander. This fellow here is going to move here. He doesn't have a line of sight, so he's going to move there. Um, these guys are going to come up this way. He's going to fire it at uh, Bravo 3. That's a 9. That is a hit. I was worried that this was going to be rough with this cover issues. He moved, so he can only shoot the one time. He's going to fire at the same one. <laughs> oh, we are not doing well. That's another casualty. Two hits on... Uh, on Havoc and two on Bravo five. And he's gonna need to move two just to get in line of sight. All right, that is the end of turn one. The smoke goes away. Not too far though. I really gotta get out of here. Um, we're gonna try to do uh, Bravo five first. Oh, he misses it. 
Okay, what happens when you miss it is you pull a sit rep card, contact, all stragglers move and attack the closest soldier in line of sight, preferring targets that don't have cover. Okay, that's not good. None of it has cover right now. So we've got the guys in the tower again. They're going to be firing. That's going to have to be the line of sight, uh, the first. So first guy is going to shoot at Bravo 5. Uh, that's a hit. And two hits. Um, that is really bad. He is down. Like he is actually dead. I guess technically he's should still. I, think he, I don't think he's bled out yet. I think he's got. All right. The other one's going to shoot at Bravo Three right here, who hasn't been hit yet. So that again, it's a nine. That's a hit. And a four. Ow, these guys are killing us. This is gonna, this could kill us. We have the fellow over here. He's gonna just get to here and not be able to shoot. These guys here. He can shoot. He can shoot. He can shoot. Two shots at our leader. First shot is a miss. Second shot is a hit. He's now down one. Second one's gonna shoot at our medic who hasn't been hit yet. Right there. That's a hit. And a miss. This is not a good way to start. And the last one's gonna shoot at Bravo 3, who's right there. That's a hit and a miss. That was a really rough card. I'm gonna try to get over to him with the doctor. Yeah, so five or higher, just barely. He's gonna get to the doctor. Technically, you can't drag and move twice now, but I'm uh, going to try to activate Bravo 3 right here with a 5. He doesn't make it. That's another sit rep card. And we get Trap. Last soldier that attempted an initiative roll has stumbled onto a tripwire. Roll for the outcome. Okay, we got a 6. Um, 6. So we have six coming in from random areas furthest from the soldier. So the first one comes in over here. Number two comes in over there. Number three, uh, four, five, and the last one. That was rough. This is this is not going to work. We need more terrain. But he still gets to make one move. So he's going to walk over here. And the boss is going to walk over here. Attempt to drop a... Uh, smoke there at least. Alright, sit rep phase. They get, we are pinned down. Straggler nearest to the last soldier that attempted an initiative roll is equipped with an MG42 machine gun. Now he will apply suppressive fire when he attacks and not move until there are no soldiers in his line of sight. He targets the closest soldier in line of sight, preferring targets that don't have cover. So that's going to be this guy here. So let's give him an upgrade. So, wow, he can suppress everybody.
we're going to try this again because that was a bloody mess. So we're going to start over here. Everybody's within control range of the boss. We, uh, so they get to activate on fives or higher. Uh, we're going to go ahead and activate Bravo 5 first. Bravo 5 is Trent Sawyer. And he's going to activate on a 5. 1. Okay, not good. So that's a sit rep card. Every time we fail, we get to only do one action. Uh, but there's a sit rob card that we pull first. All stragglers move and attack the closest soldier in line of sight, preferring targets that don't have cover. Oh, I should roll first to see if we are in stealth. So four higher on a d6. That's a little better. Three. Still, no stealth. Deal with these guys first. There's two guys up there. They're going to gonna come here and fire. He's going to fire at uh, Bravo 5. Normally he'd be in 9, or we'd need 9 or higher, uh, but it's going to be 10 or higher because of the height. 4, that is a hit. Well, the other one's going to move over to here. Uh, then he's going to shoot at Bravo 3 right next to him. Again, he needs a 10. we need a 10 or higher, but that one's fine. Over here, this guy's going to move. He's going to move for 2. That was everybody, right? Yeah, all stragglers. This one's going to move for two. And these guys are a group, so they don't count as stragglers. Nobody else has line of sight, so that's it. He now gets to move one. I think he needs to move here. So he needs to get into cover. Not an auspicious beginning. I'm going to go ahead and try to move Bravo 3. Right there. He needs a five or higher. He's got it. That actually should have been, that's uh, Bravo 1. But I'm going to send Bravo 3 over there too. So let's try to do a 5 or higher on Bravo 3. We got it. And then lastly, the leader. No problem. He's going to come up behind here. No sit rep phase. Tunnel system. Move target enemy straggler element farthest from the soldiers to a building closest to the soldier with the highest initiative. Okay, highest initiative. That's going to be Bravo 5, who is here. Closest building is there. Uh, furthest group is this, these guys here. And this one does say straggler or element. So they're going to use the tunnel to come here. They're going to count as activated, though. The other stragglers... I guess everybody activated. Does that count? I'm going to call that all activated because some of them went early on a sit rep card. Almost everybody went early. I'll have to check that later and see if... I know that if the sit rep on the sit rep phase activates, then they lose. They count as activated. I don't know if it happens as a failed initiative. So, we're going to start turn two. They don't all get that five anymore. Yeah, I'm going to try to activate... Um, Bravo 3, he activates now on a 9 or higher. Ooh, he is critically failed. An enemy straggler or element nearest to the last soldier that attempted an initiative roll moves and attacks the nearest soldier. Oh, I don't think he can. He's in the building. There's no line of sight. Okay, we'll get that. Gets pulled out, and we reshuffle the sit rep deck. I'm, I'm going to call that. I don't think he can, can, is going to come out of that building. He's in cover. And he doesn't have a target any Well, maybe, no, because they know they're there. So it's not random movement. I would give him random movement if we were stealthing. He still gets a half movement. I mean, uh, one movement, so he's going to come to there. Then I'm going to try to activate the doctor right next to him. The doctor activates on an eight or higher. That's a nine. He gets it. I don't know if I want to keep going. No. 
that you want to stay here. So we're going to try to activate Bravo 5. He's going to activate on a 5 because he's right there. Gets a 10. He can work this time. He's going to go to here. And he's going to shoot that guy right there. So uh, he's got a plus 2. The, this is a 9. Plus 2 is going to make it 7. He has a scope, which means if he misses by 2, he can roll again. So he needs a 7. Uh, he has a 13. That's a hit. So this guy's gone. The commander is going to get a 5. He activates on a 5. 17. No problem. He's going to shoot at the other guy up in the tower. He's got a plus 2. He's going to aim, though, so that would make it six or higher. Oh, but he's also in cover, uh, and that's a miss anyway. He rolled a three, the sit rep phase. Sit rep, regroup. All active soldiers on the fire team may make a free move order immediately. If there are two more fire teams in the mission area, choose one fire team. So they can regroup. Cool. That's a good sit rep. Most of the sit rep cards are not good, but that one is. Uh, there's still the guy up on that hill. He's going to go ahead and take a shot from the tower to, I guess, him. That's probably the best target. Besides, he did just shoot at him, and he is wounded. Solid coverage is a negative two. All right, so that's going to be seven. See, the way this works, the, the bad guys all have a threat level. The, right now, everybody on the table has a threat level of 7. Um, to hit them, you have to roll over their threat level. And to avoid being hit, you have to roll. You basically, because we're always playing on the side of the soldiers and not the enemy, you basically always have to roll over threat level. 7 or higher to be fine. But that's not a 7 or higher. That's a 2. Uh, that's a hit. And because I fired and didn't aim first, he can do that again. That is fine. So he hits uh, Bravo 5. Poor Trent. What are we going to do with everybody else? We're going to start from the closest. So there's a guy in the doorway here. He's going to come out of the doorway and come to the corner there. And he's going to, I'm going to call that hardcover, but let's see what, yeah, it's a 15 anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, this guy's going to walk. Um, to there. And he can shoot. Same thing. Okay, that's going to be a hit. So he is now wounded and needs a med medical care. Uh, or he's going to be a negative one and he can, can't do advanced moves. This guy's gonna move. Um, and the guys in the building, I think they're just gonna sit there right now. So that takes us to turn three. Things aren't going really well. Um, gonna go ahead and try to activate him. He can activate on a five because he's near the boss. 14, uh, oh, he's in a negative one though, well still. This is Bravo 5. Uh, he's activating. He's going to shoot at the guy on the hill up at the, tr the tree there. That's, that's going to normally be a 9. The cover is going to make it 11. The wound is going to make it 12. I'm going to go ahead and uh, aim. Which makes it back to 11. This is not a really good shot. 11, 3. Not even close. If he'd missed by 2, he could have re-rolled. I'm going to go ahead and roll with the commander. So nine, I'm going to be nine for him. I'm going to aim. That's going to be an eight. Uh, Eighteen. That is a hit. So Eric Blackburn, Havoc, takes this guy out. That's good. That's going to matter. We needed that guy gone. I'm going to go ahead and move uh, Sonny Quinn, Bravo 3. Um, he activates on a nine or higher. Five. He does not activate. 
Contact. All stragglers move and attack the closest soldier in line of sight, referring targets that don't have cover. Everyone's got cover, so that's... But a bunch of them don't have to move. This one... Uh, he can't get... This guy's gonna shoot it at poor Bravo 5 again. Uh, cover's gonna make it... 7. Uh, that's a hit. He's down. And the other one's gonna shoot at the boss. Seven. He misses. Uh, again. Misses. And that's all that had line of sight. Turn four. All right, I think we need to get the doctor over there. Uh, I'm gonna activate the boss for five. One, he has a fail, but he can re-roll that because that's what he does. A two, one, no, he's absolutely not going. Sonny Quinn, Bravo three, and he activates. He's gonna come up here and try to shoot the guy behind. That's gonna be a nines, because again, okay, that's a hit. So he's gone. However, Sonny Quinn, on the first shooting attack Sonny makes during this player phase, Results in the KIA, which it did. He can make a second shooting attack for free, which is brilliant, because he's going to do that. He's going to try to shoot the guy over there, which is also a nine. But that's a mess. Doc's going to go over here. Uh, if he can, he needs an eight. He does. He's going to go over. And soldier in the fire team's medic. Uh, takes two orders, damn it. Perform the medical aid to model the base contact. Medical aid removes one wound. I don't think he can do it. I think he's it's he's gonna be dead anyway, so he can't. Uh, I think he's gonna have to come here and shoot. He's gonna go there, he's gonna shoot. He's got plus two, it covers it makes it two, so it's gonna be a nine. And that's eleven. He's hit. So at least they took a bunch of them out. But but they lost Trent Sawyer. And that was only the contact card. Who didn't? No, I think they've all gone. So, sit rep. That's a big boy. The enemy nearest to the last soldier that attempted an initiative roll has plus one HP. If the enemy is part of an enemy element, he will separate by a move and the element become a trained straggler. So that's this guy here. He now takes two hits if, if he gets hit at all. I think we've got possible shooting now. Seven to him. Oh, shoot, that's a hit. And the other one, seven to him. There's a miss. The other guys are all gone. All right, that's not too bad. Turn five. I'm gonna try to shoot a grenade with the 203 into here. Takes two orders, under barrel, grenade launcher, deals one wound to all models in its AOE. There's two guys in there. All right, so he's going to fire through the window with it. He's got a plus two. I'll go ahead and call it that seven. Oh, you have to activate first. He's got to roll his um, nine or higher. Uh, that's not going to be successful. Tunnel system. Move target, enemy, straggler, or element furthest from the soldiers to a building closest to the soldier with the highest initiative. I think they're all actually in the closest building. Oh, but now he can't do two orders. He can shoot though, so he's going to go ahead and shoot. Just a normal gun. Uh, he does have a scope on this, so he needs a seven. That's a crit. Bam! One of them is dead. However, he's the guy that can shoot again if he does that, so he's going to go and shoot the other one, or try. And he does. Ba -ba bang ba -ba bang He's cleared that building. All right, this game's going better than the last one. I'm going to try to activate the doctor. Doctor's going to activate on a five. He does. He's just going to walk over to here and try to shoot this guy right through here. Yeah. He is obscured. 
Uh, doctor's got a plus two, that's going to obscure, take that away, so it's going to need a nine or higher, two, but he doesn't get it. And lastly, we have our box, and he fails there. Oh, but he can reroll, and he failed. So he's not got it this time. And he's going to come up here. And fire. And he needs a nine, and that's a hit. Boom. There are no bad guys on the table. That is not a hit. That guy has two hits. So he's still there. That was that big guy. Now it is a sit rep phase. Technical. Uh, technical enters the mission area from a random table edge that is not the edge the soldier is deployed from. Uh, when a technical activates, it will make an advance. One, two, three, four. It's going to come on from over here. And then we remove that. The last guy that's here is going to shoot. He's going to shoot at the doctor. Uh, that's going to be a seven or higher. Uh, second one, two, that's a hit. Doctor's hit. It's turn six. And we have not accomplished anything. Well, we've taken some people out. We'll try to activate the doctor on a five. Thirteen, he's successful. He's going to shoot. Uh, he's going to go ahead and aim. Make it eight. That's a miss. I'm uh, going to go ahead and roll five or higher for my boss. He just barely makes it. Uh, he's going to try to do that. Again, it's a nine or higher. Twelve. That's a hit. Boom. And let's move. All right, so things are beginning to move a little bit better. We are down a guy. Can't afford that. We've activated everybody, so it's sit rep phase. We get, I have movement. A straggler enters the mission area from the nearest building or terrain feature. Car door, building door, bush, etc. to the soldier with the highest initiative. It's either going to be, well, he's dead, so it's going to be this guy. I'm going to make it a car door, I think, because that building has been shot up a bit. I'm going to put him right here. That's his movement. The vehicle's going to come down the road. have a shot. No, I think that's line of sight blocking. We'll turn seven. Can I activate the boss because he activates on a five? Five. That's just barely successful. I'm going to shoot the guy right out in the open there with a seven. Boom. He's dead. And then we're going to move to there. I'm going to try to activate this one here with a, a nine. Check this building. Hey, what do you know? That's the marked one. We don't actually have to take everything now. We could just get off the table. I gotta move him. He's off on his own right now. He needs an eight. He's got it. Keep trying to get more because we're going to start getting more reactions and we could just leave the table. But it is sit rep phase now for an agent. Roll 1d6 for each civ oh, there's no civilians. So no for an agent and that comes out. Uh, the only thing out here right now is the vehicle. And it's getting close. We're going to have to deal with it. All right, turn eight. I think this is when the double sit wraps happen. I'm going to activate the guy inside. I'm going to claim, I'm going to assume he has to activate. Uh, he does. He gets the objective. We're never going to get that one. And we're never going to get that one. I think we should just get out of here. We're going to just start moving out of here. So he's going to come out of the door to there. Okay, they're both within fives. I'm going to activate uh, the leader first. Uh, eight. He makes it. Get him here.
ready to cover when that guy comes around the corner. And this guy here. Also. Now I'm gonna start taking him off the table. Uh, sit wraps too. Contact front. A straggler enters the mission area from the nearest building or train feature, car door building, except if the soldier with the highest initiative and attacks the nearest soldier. This one's got an attack. Um, so it's going to come out from the nearest and attack the highest. So he's going to shoot at this guy right open in the, in the open there. It's a nine. That's a miss. So then the vehicle is going to go. And that's going to hurt. It's going to be nine. Three. That is a hit. So Bravo 3 has been hit by the uh, technical. And that is the end of turn. Oh, that isn't. That was only the first sit rep. Lost my balance. Threat level 10. Roll immediately. The soldier furthest from the enemy loses his footing. Uh, that's going to be over here. Um, so we're going to roll a 10. We need 10 or higher. He's okay. And it is now turn 9. Going to go ahead and try to activate the doctor. He activates on an 8. He doesn't make it. Uh, that's going to be a sit rep card. Two sit reps, I think. He has intel. The enemy furthest from the last soldier that attempted initiative becomes an objective. You must subdue him. Uh, if you receive the enemy's intel, he's removed from the mission area. The soldier that subdued the enemy receives plus one. Uh, I just don't see how that's going to happen. I, I never can do that one. This is going to be the guy in the vehicle, so I don't see how that's possible. In contact, all enemy elements activate. They will move towards the nearest soldier and make an attack. If there are no soldiers in line of sight after the move, the enemy elements will perform a second move. So we got a shot there. And that's a miss. And then the vehicle is going to come around the corner and it's going to shoot. And that is also a miss. All right. And then he moves. I'm going to try to move the wounded Sunny Quang, Bravo 3. He um, gets activated on a 5. He does. He's going to go there and then shoot the guy in the vehicle. So that guy is going to be 9, 7. That's a mess. Um, then I'm going to try to activate with the boss. 10, that's going to be a successful one. He's going to shoot the guy in the vehicle. No, he isn't. But he can do it again because he can do anything. And that's better. Two sit reps. Contact. All enemy activate. They will move towards the nearest soldier and make an attack. There's only one. He's going to shoot at the boss right there. Uh, that's going to be... That's a mess. And the second one, regroup. All active soldiers in the fire team may make a free move order. That is brilliant. We're going to do that. All right. Now, it is turn 10. I'm going to try to activate him on a 5. We got it. Boop. Boop. He is off the table. Going to activate the boss on a five. Uh, he misses it, but he gets to retry it. 20, no problem. Boop. Boop. And the last one, the doctor is going to activate on an eight. And he's off the table. Uh, two sit rep cards. Sniper. Place one enemy sniper on the highest elevation furthest from the soldiers. The enemy sniper will activate before each sit rep phase. When the sniper activates, staying in elevation, he will move towards the nearest soldier. We have a sniper. I don't think it's going to matter at this point of the game, particularly since he's got to go in the highest point of elevation. And then the second one, contact front. A straggler enters the mission area from the nearest building or train. That's more of a problem. But near the highest initiative, only one guy's on the table, so it's going to be coming out of this building here, out of that door right there. Doesn't say he gets an attack, though. This one does, though. He doesn't have a target. He's going to move to here. 
and to here is the target now. And one last turn, two, roll again, one, that's a fail. Hold position. This card is drawn during the sit rep phase. Enemies will not move. It is, was not, though. Uh, IED, threat level nine. Uh oh. He's not the guy that avoids those. First soldier that attempted initiative roll this turn has stepped into an IED. If failed, the soldier receives three wounds. So I need to roll nine or higher. I did. And then he gets his free move, and he is off the table. All right, we have succeeded. We haven't overwhelmingly succeeded because we only got the primary objective. Uh, we have a second primary of the, the man that was in the, had intel in the truck, but we killed him. And, uh, and then we had also the other intel, which we just left alone. One of the things I decided to do tonight is, as an example of one of the issues that you can face with this game, or possible issues. I actually enjoy it, uh, but it is something I think you ought to be aware of if you're looking at the game. And that is, the game can be a little random. The fact that it's being driven by the choice of random cards uh, and by some of the dice rolls can mean how a scenario unfolds can really vary. Now, I think it's really good for allowing for continued gameplay. You could play some of these same missions over again, and they're always going to feel a little bit different. The first version of this scenario I tried to play, um, I left it on to show you, one, the importance of terrain. I thought I could get by with the lack of terrain on that one flank where it turned out is exactly where the entrance point was. I should have paid better attention to my map. But even when I noticed that, I thought that smoke grenades would help cover for it. We would just use that to provide concealment to get through the non-terrain area. Problem with that is that this isn't an I-go-you-go game, and the smoke disappears on the clear phase, which is the last phase of three phases that make up a turn. So you can throw that smoke and put it up for the enemy's sit rep phase. It's going to go away on the clear, but there's no guarantee that you're going to have the opportunity to put new smoke down before they can shoot. And the reason for that is because I just sort of hinted at it after saying it wasn't a you-go, I-go game, that it kind of is. The thing is that every time you activate a character, you have to roll their initiative. And if you fail to activate, if you fail to make that initiative roll, you immediately play an enemy sit, well, I say it's an enemy, you play a sit rep card. Those are usually enemy activities. And if you noticed in that first attempt at the game, we got the worst sit rep cards you could. Frequently, these cards will just be a new enemy appears, or maybe the enemy gets stronger than he was, or, or one who's near you moves, one who far away from you moved. I kept getting the ones where every single one of them gets an action. So um, that got really bloody, and because that's when you fail an initiative, it can very well be before you had that opportunity to throw the next smoke grenade. You, you only get a handful of these smoke grenades anyway, so it's a bit of a challenge. Would have been a problem anyway. But that was a great example of how Bad luck on your activation rolls and a bad luck with your sit rep cards can really mess you up. So I gave up. As you saw, my, my fire team was ruined. I added a little more terrain in that corner, in that quadrant of the battlefield, and then played again. And then it went a little more conventional. And see, that can happen. You can end up with an overwhelming amount of opposition, or you might end up with very light opposition. I would argue mostly I didn't have much opposition at all. It is the nature of a game using cards, and with how few there are, that often you're going to go through that deck. Maybe not as much as you used to, because I've added sit rep cards for both uh, those two new expansions. So my number of sit rep cards has expanded, because I was using the sit rep cards from not only SEALs, but also from the Special Ops uh, expansion. So that sort of changes that a bit. So that's something to keep in mind with. But the game, the game is very flexible. It is very easy. Very quickly, you'll have yourself understanding everything in the rules and being able to proceed forward. And it's a, it makes for a far more interesting and exciting game that the small number of pages in the book make you think it's going to. Now, in our second adventure, I should probably talk a little bit about the, the, the second action. The second action are 
enemies, it was a little lighter. We were pretty successful. We had some dangerous, rough issues. Uh, the additional terrain of those little mountains really helped me a lot. I felt that was justified because the original map has a whole bunch of trees I wasn't using. You know, all I have are these scrawny palm trees, which I don't feel like really would be blocking line of sight. And, um, and in the jungle, there would have been a whole lot more uh, protection and, and coverage in line of sight blocking terrain. So I don't think it was wrong to put the, the little rocks out there to make it a little heavier. But we did end up with, because of the secret tunnel, we had a lot of bad guys in that one little close building. Uh, we were very fortunate that the primary objective, the marked objective token, happened to be in that building. I actually had thought it was the one that was way up in the tower, and I don't know how we would have got it. Um, we probably could have continued. This game, this particular scenario has no time limit. But from the turn eight onward, you're pulling two sit rep cards. I wasn't clear from the rules whether that meant every time you pulled a sit rep card or on the sit rep phase, but I decided to do it every single time, um, which means that the level of response was going to be doubling. Um, in fact, it's called reinforcements. So I think the discretion is the better part of Valor. Now, one of the things they've started to do uh, these new books are written more like little campaigns. Uh, so there's rewards that you get that carry over to the next game. So, for instance, in this one, uh, rewards receive C4 demolition charge for mission two. So because I acquired the primary objective, I'm going to get a C4 demolition charge that I can use in the next mission. Uh, if I had gained any of the secondary objectives, then we would have been able to negate a sit rep card uh, drawn during the player phase, which uh, could have saved me in this game. So I may, uh, I may play that onward. Uh, but that's, uh, that's Battle Space. Uh, right now, while it's available on War Games Vault, it is very inexpensive. And it's a very enjoyable game. I really recommend purchasing it and giving it a try. Uh, that being said, I'm looking forward to the Modiphius coffee when it comes out, and I will be buying it. Uh, it is my hope that, that it might add a little more, that some of the things may be easier to find. Right now, there's sometimes rules that are in sidebars, and, and that's a pet peeve of mine. You kind of expect the sidebar to be an example, and instead it's actually got a, an important rule. Um, and sometimes the rules aren't really where you'd expect them to be. Uh, so they're simple rules, but the things you use less often are not always as easy to find as you might like. So hopefully that might be cleaned up. Um, even still, I, I have no complaints about the original one, but I will. I like the game enough, I'm certainly going to invest in the new one. Uh, and when I do, I'll, I'll share it with you here on Cry Havoc Wargaming. Uh, if, uh, if you play Battlespace, you have any questions about the game, uh, or suggestions you'd like to make for further content you'd like to see us produce here on Cry Havoc Wargaming, we look for that in the comment section down below. If you've enjoyed this video and found it all useful, I hope that you'll hit like. And if you'd like to continue to receive videos like this one that might help you determine how to better spend your money or time in your tabletop wargaming hobby, then I hope you will hit subscribe and ring our notification bell. Till next time, cheers.